you can see it now, yes. Um, the, my uh, former speaker I already introduced the strategy. Uh, I will go a little bit more in detail and uh, also try to answer some of his questions already. Um, let's see. One second. Yes. Um, you have already yesterday uh, been informed uh, by the EA on, on the main uh, impacts. Uh, like my former speaker, uh, I said the impacts are already here. We are already uh, over one degree warmer climate than, than it used to be before. However, this is only the beginning and uh, we already see in every region in Europe, we see the impacts of climate change. And um, but the bad news is, is that this is only uh, a first start. And even if we, we manage to, to uh, firmly reduce the emissions of greenhouse gases, we will be confronted with a lot of impacts uh, of climate change over the next decennia. And some of these impacts will even last for centuries. For example, sea level rise will continue over the next 200 years, 300 years, even if we succeed in reducing our temperature rise to one and a half or two degrees. So there's a lot to do in terms of uh, mitigation, the reduction of climate change uh, gases, but at the same time, we need to work on climate adaptation as well. Um, the new commission uh, started in 2019 and one of the first and major uh, actions was the presentation of the European Green Deal. Uh, the European Green Deal reflects uh, two important worldwide global uh, developments, the 2030 Agenda for Sustainable Development and the 2015 Paris Agreement. And as you might know, the European Green Deal uh, consists of a lot of uh, elements and uh, it's focusing on the, the environmental aspects, on the economic aspects and on the social aspects as well. And I think that is, um, uh, of course, quite important. Um, the, the European Green Deal also involves uh, no person and no place left behind. And uh, one of the uh, goals is future proof jobs and skills training for the transition. And this also applies to the EU adaptation strategy. Um, I'm really struggling with... Sorry. Um, this is normally never happening, and now I have problems with uh, with my presentation. Moving to the next slide. One second, please. Uh, Mr. Gosen, if you want, I can also uh, share yeah. my screen with your presentation. Just stop sharing your screen. I will just okay. display yeah, it's, my... It's pretty weird, I must say. Uh, sorry. Um... Otherwise, I have to wait. Uh, um, if you like, I just I could also uh, share my screen and also. Yeah, please. Okay. Oh, uh, stop share. Sorry. Okay. Thank yeah. you. Here we go. 
Yeah. So. Okay, I have to catch up. I was just going to uh, my fourth uh, uh, slide, which uh, gives an overview of the EU adaptation strategy, which um, which has four uh, objectives. Uh, one of them is uh, faster adaptation, uh, smarter adaptation. Uh, like the former speaker said, um, um, there are fields still where we need more uh, knowledge on, on um, the impacts of uh, climate change, for example, on workers' conditions, but also uh, know better on, on how uh, the, the precipitation will change or how much, what will be the risk of heat waves in the future. Uh, and we also have to um, investigate what are good uh, measures to take for adaptation. So there is a lot there still which needs to be um, uh, investigation, and we will do so. The second one is more systemic adaptation. That means that um, the, the impacts of climate change uh, affect every sector and every policy field. Um, it was amazing to see when we were drafting the new EU, EU adaptation strategy that almost all services of the European Commission uh, were involved. Um, every sector will, every policy field will deal with it. So we are always talking about mainstreaming. Uh, we want that every, uh, everyone and every sector, every policy uh, uh, considers what will be the impact of uh, a changing climate and how can you prepare for that because it's very clear that if you incorporate that the climate is changing uh, it's much, much more cost effective to take measures now to be prepared for the future uh, one of the examples is always with infrastructure um, if you construct new infrastructure it's much cheaper now to already take into account that the temperature will be higher or there will be more rainfall, but also for construction of production halls, if you know that heat uh, is going to be a problem uh, more in the future in a certain country, you can already think about improving the working conditions uh, for the future climate. Uh, the third objective is faster adaptation uh, because we already know a lot uh, and, and we need to take action and we see that there are a lot of barriers uh, to to act on adaptation and we have made quite a lot of proposals on how to speed up adaptation and last but not least um, in, uh, in uh, the global perspective um, we see that uh, climate change doesn't stop at the borders of the European uh, Union we have uh, impacts of climate uh, all around the world which also affects uh, Europe. And uh, there's also this solidarity between nations that we should help each other with learning what it will be the impacts of climate change and, um, and how can we help each other with taking measures. Next slide, please. Um, so if you look a little bit more in detail on, on, the, um, on these objectives, then you will see, um, that uh, we indeed will uh, start to um, increase our funding of, of knowledge. We will do that through Horizon Europe, which is a big uh, innovation and science uh, uh, program in the EU. Uh, we will uh, take a lot of actions to uh, have more and better climate related risk and loss data. Uh, data nowadays are very crucial to see all the developments and to see what is the most effective measure. And uh, I would really advise also all of you, if you want to know more on, on the knowledge and all the reports and all the measures in Europe, we have a platform Climate Adept with a, a lot of knowledge. Next slide, please. Uh, about more systemic adap adaptation, um, uh, one of the elements mentioned already, it's very important that we own, now we have an EU adaptation strategy, which is at EU level, but it's important that uh, member states, regions, but also local uh, communities, companies, all start to develop their own adaptation strategy and their own plans. Because in the end of the day, adaptation is very local 
situated you always need to take action on the ground on the floor so this is something which needs to uh, that's why you need this detailed uh, adaptation strategies and plans uh, important for today's uh, webinar is of course the, the the goal fostering local individual and just resilience um, very important, and um, I will tell you a little bit uh, in my last part uh, of the um, of this presentation. Um, I would also like to stress that we, in this strategy, we see a, a strong link with uh, fiscal policy, with investments, with you need new ways of investing uh, in the future, and their climate adaptation needs to be involved. And there are a lot of opportunities to improve that. I mentioned, for example, the taxonomy, which the Commission decided upon this year and which forms the basis so that we know now that future investments, they will be good for the climate, both from mitigation and adaptation. And last but not least here is nature-based solutions. Uh, nature offers very much um, adaptation uh, services and by restoring more nature, for example, giving more restore the floodplains along rivers or to have more forest near cities. There will be cleaner air, there will be lower temperatures and less risk of flooding. And this is all very important to, um, to develop. Uh, next slide. The last uh, or the third objective is about uh, this uh, acceleration, speeding up action. And we want to do that in, in very, very different ways. I will not go into detail here, but um, um, it's important to uh, reduce the risk and also fresh water. You see water and climate, uh, the climate system and the water system are very much connected and climate change will uh, result in the increase of droughts. And um, yeah, that's very important, mainly, of course, for the southern part of Europe, but also in the mid and already in the, the mid parts of Europe, we encounter uh, severe droughts over the last years. And, and the prediction is that that will increase considerably. So we really have to think about how to make our landscape more resilient and how to uh, reduce the, the use of water so that we will have a new, enough water for the future. Next slide. And on international action, uh, we, we will take a lot of initiatives. Uh, we will support um, countries, um, but also um, the international trade unions, other NGOs. We will work together and share knowledge and support them. Um, there are also the international finance is an important uh, element because if you can influence international funding, it will have a huge impact and we will, as the EU and the member states, be more active on multilateral uh, negotiations like, the, of course, now happening the COP26 uh, in, in Glasgow. Next slide. A little focus on the fostering local individual and just resilience. Um, like remarked by the former speaker, just resilience, I think, is we are one of the first in our strategy to mention it. It's correct that uh, this new term is still developing, but we really want uh, to make sure that the impacts of climate change um, uh, will not hit certain uh, geographical areas or certain uh, social groups more severe than others. And we know from the EEA, uh, European Environmental Agency studies, that there is this risk of the climate change impacts hitting some areas or some groups more severe. And we have developed three actions, mentioned three actions, which you can read here, I will not read them out, but these are the actions where the commission committed to, to, uh, to execute these actions in the next years. And we will do that together with all the services within the commission. Um, um, so that, that is an important action and we are inviting all relevant groups, also the E2, to cooperate uh, with us on this. Um, so local adaptation is very important. Reskilling and then requalification of workers for a just and fair resilience is important. We will through, do that through 
European Social Fund Plus, Erasmus and European Solidarity Corps. And we will um, ensure the enforcement of existing employment social legislation because there is already this legislation and some of this legislation will only be of more, uh, even more importance with changing climate conditions. But if new initiatives are needed, we will, uh, we will uh, work on that. Uh, I'd like to underline that this strategy is binding the commission. It's a strategy. Uh, what is important that as a result of this strategy, we need to um, new initiatives, new legislation. This will all be in the next years as a, on basis of this strategy. Next slide, please. And um, I hear even more in detail to, to about this enforcement of existing employment and social legislation. Um, and we will support and encourage regional, local, public authorities and employers organizations to work together with trade unions in mapping and assessing the negative impact climate change may have on the regional economic environment and workers. So this is in the this is one of the actions very specific in the strategy, and also these new instru instruments I mentioned are explicitly mentioned. Uh, also, especially the exposure to high temperatures, which is already a problem now and which will really will increase to be a problem in the future. I'm almost there. Uh, last uh, next slides. Yes, like I said, this strategy was by the Commission, so it was very important to discuss it with everyone. We are happy to be here to discuss it with you as well. The, the member states dis discussed the strategy immediately after publication in February, and already four months later in June, before summer, they had their council conclusions, which were very positive, and they are really expressing all of them their willingness to helping implement the strategy and work together with the Commission and other committees. Um, and we will continue to support member states, national authorities, businesses and individuals. We will do that financially with knowledge and with tools. And like I said, we really like to, to have the discussion and work together. Thank you very much uh, for your attention.